LeGrant Taylor is a native of Anger, North Carolina, where he spent his early years growing up in an underprivileged neighborhood. LeGrant is a self-taught artist who uses oil on canvas to paint from the soul's eye. He describes his style as a unique blend of several different styles. I sat down with LeGrant to hear a unique perspective on his life and his art. Okay, inspiration was um, developed it was in the beginning of my painting career. Uh, I had an accident and um, which budded the my painting career. I was I got in a car accident and I was um, sitting in a chair, back was hurting, and I had back injuries from the accident. And the good Lord spoke to me, he said, go get a canvas and go get some paint and start painting. And of course I was like, what is this speaking to me? You know. And so I when I was out, I had gone to a um, doctor's appointment. I stopped by the paint store and I picked up some paint and I uh, picked up a canvas. <laughs> and I came back and I got me a, a camera tripod and taped the uh, canvas to the, um, to the uh, tripod and started painting. So how old were you when all this occurred? I was 40 years old. So you did not start painting professionally until you were 40. 40, yes. Wow. And I think you maybe had one art class in yeah. your life? One art class in uh, junior high school, which was in the eighth grade, up under the leadership of uh, Robert Dunning. And I uh, took another class in ninth grade under Susan Warlick, uh, and that was at North Garner uh, Middle School. And um, never oil painted day in my life until I had actually did a, a oil painting when I was a kid, paint by numbers. And um, I just was afraid of oil painting because I didn't like the way to paint it. Oil, um, when you paint by numbers, you're basically painting in little blocks and that's it. And I wanted to see more of the definition and the blending and how you get depth with the shadows. And um, so started and um, it started to develop. So this inspiration picture actually has uh, a sequel to it, let's say, called Kissable. Tell us about that kissable part that draws the audience in. Through my art, I try to basically bring the, the viewer into the actual painting. And the lips kind of seals the deal on the, the inspirational piece. That's like the inspiration was kind of like, you know, you, you get this inspiration and where does it come from? And, and, and what does it take you to? Well, the inspiration, of course, came from God. Um, it is definitely a gift. And so the kissable kind of seals the deal, and it's um, a sequel painting. But um, the, the first, the top piece was probably done in a, or the, the inspiration was probably done in about a month. And the kissable was probably done in a week. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. So when you are painting and you say the inspiration is coming from God, I'm interested in knowing, did that pain that you were experiencing go away? No. <laughs> so you had the to paint through the pain. I had to work through the pain. But I actually, uh, while I was actually painting, um, I, I had a hard time getting comfortable. And so with the, the, when I started doing the painting, I was able to get into different I was able to get the concentration of the paint off. I would um, get in different positions, and um, I went through a lot of therapy. <laughs> and eventually, the pain uh, did subside. I still, every now and then, I still have some pains, but um, the um, the paintings do help me to uh, defer the pain. One of my favorite paintings of yours is called No Looking Back, K-N-O-W, No Looking Back. And 
When I was going over your biography, I saw where you attended Shawan College, now Shawan University in Murfreesboro. Yes. And I'm from that general area. So mm -hmm. this painting reminds me of home and it looks like a, a dirt road, uh -huh. a very Long rural road. area. Tell us about um, the scripture that goes along with this painting. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So is that what this painting is, is saying? Yes. Uh, no looking back, um, it's a timeless piece. It, uh, there's nothing in there to put a focus on time. Uh, everybody's there, your aunt, your uncle, your grandma, your uh, younger cousin, your older cousin. And everything. that's what I was going to say, these, these the, 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 the people in the picture, I don't even want to call them characters because they look like people that we might know no, and they right. remind me of people that were in my church, for instance, yes. that I grew up with and those were endearing people mm -hmm. and that's what it gives a very warm feeling to yes, the picture. It and it's about, it's about the knowledge of the past. Um, it, 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 it takes you back to things that I always use the scenario of the hot, the hot stove scenario. Um, no looking back is can be uh, taken two different ways. It can uh, you go through some bad things, you go through some good things. Uh, the bad things, you, if you don't learn anything good out of the bad things, then you missed it. And so that's what it's all about. It's about the hot iron theory. You touch it, you get burned, you go back. Do you touch it again? I don't think so. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but we all have gone through some bad things in our past. We've gone through some good things. The, I find that the elders, or elderly people look at it and they can really reflect back on the different things we've gone through down the road. Um, civil rights movement is where I really look at a lot of it, uh, slavery. Um, but also, I get uh, folks of other nationalities that look at it, and they can see something within that painting that draws them into it, and they feel like they're right there, and I've been there, and I've gone here, and I've done this, and, I've, and I can move on now, which is the big purpose of no looking back. Well... The reason why that piece is not signed is because the drum major is yet is still evolving. Um, it's been one of my hardest paintings. I started getting into the drum major and I was like, oh man, this is just wonderful. And the drum major is the helping hand mission guy that comes down in the parade. And, yeah, because uh, I thought it was A&T at first. <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. And so... Um, this guy, he's, he's a drum major and he's doing his thing. And I notice every year in the Dollar Christmas Parade, you know, the Helping Hand Mission guy comes by and he's drawing the crowd and everything's falling. And um, one thing that has always intrigued me about the drum major is uh, what Martin Luther King said about, Martin Luther King Jr. said about uh, be a drum major for something. Yes. Tell him I was a drum major for justice. Yes. And so, as you look at this piece, there's no people in back of him. So as he's walking down and he's doing his drum major, whatever you are, you're a drum major for something. Right. And so as he's walking, he's drawing these people into him, into his calling. Mm -hmm. And um, he's spreading a little bit of this, spreading a little bit of that. And so it trickles into their soul. Yes. And they um, have that with them that they have to carry in which I guess goes back to wisdom. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Well, that cape on, on this particular painting uh, grabs my attention, attention first. <laughs> was it designed to do that? Because yes. that's the first thing I started concentrating yes, on. And then as we look deeper into the picture, then I started to recognize, okay, this isn't a parade. We're not at a football game. Something else going on yeah, here. That's one of the things that seems to stand out in a number of your paintings that um, at first when I look at it, it seems like the obvious comes out and then there's so much more behind it. So it's really wonderful to be able to have you talk to us about what's actually going on. Now, um, can we talk about your signature? On yes, different ones of, of these, course. I see script and on some of them it looks like it was 
uh, just uh, printed, handwritten, just printed. Uh, so tell us about the evolution of your signature. Well, I started out with um, the signature, and I was, it just started bothering me, and I was like, people are not going to recognize the, the, the signature, and they're not going to be able to read it. And then um, as time goes on, I said, well, I'll start scripting it. And I, um, so I started, I mean, started uh, printing it. So I printed it, and um, I liked it, and it just started wearing on me. And someone brought it to my attention. They put me to the side and they said, um, I want to ask you about your signature. And I was like, okay. It's like, why do you have some of them printed, some of them? I said, well, I've been battling this fight about what I wanted to stick with, what I wanted to put as my stamp. And so um, we talked about it, and she said, well, I'm not, you know, she didn't want to, she wasn't imposing, but she said, there's something to think about because that is something that you want to actually have as your stamp. And I said, I said, I know you're right. And so I went back home, and I thought about it, and so I ended up going with the script. And so from that day forward, uh, all of my paintings will be signed with script. There's only very few of them with uh, the printed. Well, those will definitely be collector's <laughs> items, the ones that are printed. One of these paintings looks a lot different from all the others. The name of it is Shout. Shout. Now, um, Tell me what's behind the shout picture. I got up one morning and I had this pain in my chest. And I reached over to turn off my alarm clock and something said, take your hand back. And so I took my hand back and so I slowly did it again and I felt this sharp pain in my chest and I told my wife I think I'm having a heart attack. Well, got up and I uh, went into my uh, bathroom and I leaned over my uh, sink and I told her, I said, I got a pain in my chest and I think I'm having a heart attack. And so she said, go back and get in the bed and I'll be right out. She was in the shower. And so I got ready to sit down on the tub and whenever I did, I blanked out. Whew. Got the emergency uh, room asked me if I had ever heard of sarcoid. And I'm like, uh, no, what's sarcoid? And he says, um, well, you need to go and see a pulmonary guy and all this stuff. And I said, okay. So I go see the pulmonary guy. They do a uh, uh, bronchoscopy. And uh, they go down and they get a piece of meat in your lung and they diagnose it, see what's wrong. So in the process of all this happening, we're waiting for the results. I'm in church and I'm sitting there and the Lord speaks to me. And he says, you don't have cancer. And I said, OK, because that's where everything was going was leading to cancer. And he said, you don't have cancer. And so I went into a shout. And so the shout, as you notice, uh, if you look at the shout, there's a person praying. Yes. And then you have a rise of the shout that comes out in the middle. And it's like the explosion of the shout. And it um, starts with the, the colors give the intensities of the shout. And so you have some people that go into very mild shouts, and some that go into very hard shouts. Um, and the shout was, a re shout represents the diagnosis that I got, which was sarcoidosis, which is not the greatest thing in the world, but it's, it may be better than cancer. So I don't, I, they, Say it's the best of the two evils. Uh, as a child, um, I was born with a birth defect. I was blind in my left eye. Um, I can see light, uh, and it's like uh, it's, I can't, can't recognize anything. It's just I see maybe the movement. It looks like somebody put some grease over a glass and just smashed it right in my eyes, what it looks like. There's nothing that can I can um, identify. Uh, so 
I've often wondered about it, why I had it, and I couldn't play sports, and they took me out of sports, and they said, you can't do this, you can't do that because um, of your blindness, which left me to say, okay, so you're handicapped. Okay, so I'm handicapped, but that doesn't stop the train from going. And um, so I think that uh, from that gift, uh, I can see a lot of detail that uh, is there, um, and I think that's God's gift. I think that it's, uh, he put that in me to be able to go and see the deepest dark point of the shadow, the lightest point of where the, uh, actually, of where the, where the light hits the, the object and bounces off. Um, and if I had to say anything to anybody who was inspiring to paint, I would say, don't paint the picture, paint the detail. Wow. Because the detail is where the picture is. Right. Objects have shapes and sides, but light shows the beginning and the end. That's actually one of the things that stands out to me about a number of your painting is the, uh, paintings is the way that the light plays off of um, the detail. Yeah. That, and, and it's amazing that it's actually what one might term a disability is what helps um, yeah. to highlight that particular part of your paintings. Yeah. So what do you love most about being an artist? The thing I love most about being an artist is being able to um, have my boundaries. I can set my boundaries. I can get um, deep into the pictures and um, how can I say it? At this point, I've come to a statement that my paintings are sermons on canvas. So I want them to be able to preach to you and be able to say something to you to make you be able to feel and be in the moment and be able to um, feel like you were there and that it's actually a part of you. So whenever I'm painting, I try not to um, paint something that would be obscene. Right. I want uh, because every, that would draw the audience in as well. That's right. I want the I want the number the, the two year old to come up and say, "Hey, mommy, I like this painting," right. and I want the ninety nine to one hundred five year old to come in and say, "I like this painting." So those are the people that I want to create. I mean, or, or bring into my paintings, and I want them to be from that age level on down. appears that you've had to go through many storms even to continue painting. Um, what about this? Isn't this painting called The Storm? Uh, and the Storm is about going through some, anything you go through in life, it's a storm. Either you're going in a storm or you're coming out of a storm. True. And um, that's what this one speaks about. It's a, it's a, it's a help me for a lot of people with um, my focus on this one was probably breast cancer, uh, it, uh, and I featured the, the ladies in there. Um, but uh, my focus on it was uh, trials and tribulations, and different things people have to go through. You got to go through that storm. You cannot stop in the middle of it and get off of this and, and break away. You got to go through it, and sure. and the 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 results, the end results, are amazing because it's your testimony. What impact do you think technology has had on visual art creativity? Oh my goodness, I'm <laughs> glad you asked that question. Because that's kind of where things are going. going. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, that is a, that's a fight with me on the um, side of selling. Um, I try to that's one reason why I try to paint things that I feel like everybody will want to see and somebody want to be a part of. Um, I think that uh, people are getting away from printing and they're going digital, right. which makes it real simple to capture and steal and uh, bootleg and do all kinds of things with uh, paintings. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it kind of disturbs me because I'm a printer by trade. Uh, so I, I, I actually can press my own artwork, some of them not to a certain size, but I can actually, I have one piece that I've pressed, which is the No Looking Back piece, which is the first piece, which is what I call a true work of art from beginning to all the way out of the press. So I actually printed my first piece. Um, but I think that um, the printing industry is really getting hurt by the digital um, the digital uh, uh, tools that they have out there now. Um, although you can get high-end uh, Z-Clays uh, printings of your high-definition prints of your, um, your originals. And is that what Z-Clay is? Z-Clays are a type of uh, printing that is a, it's the closest they have of, of a reproduction of your original. I see, and, and you have one here, that, yes, this um, beach scene. Yes, the beach scene, the um, A Day at the Beach, uh -huh. and also uh, the piece that's on display that you'll see today is um, also a Z play. Well, I think my price range is probably around Fifteen hundred uh, for an original, on up to uh, the front view, which is um, I would consider the masterpiece of the masterpieces. <laughs> <laughs> and that's this one right here. Yeah, that's the one we're working on right now. And uh, the front view could probably, uh, if someone gave me eighty-five hundred for it, I'd probably cry like a baby. Um, this is going in my home. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing you told me about that front pew painting is that you actually took several different oh, pictures. Yeah. It's a and conglomeration. Them. It's a conglomeration of about 50 different photographs. Um, I work in, uh, on the um, sound ministry at church, and I take uh, photographs of everything that's going on, everything. And so this picture got inspired. Uh, I see what's going on, and uh, it's like, you know, you, you see all these people having a great time, and it's like, where do you go from there? And it's like, me as an artist, I have to put this out there and show where people are having a good time in church, and they're, you know, they're going for their, going, uh, for their callings. And um, to reach out uh, the ministries in the church, you need to reach out to the, to the world and bring them in so they can learn about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ivy Hayes is uh, one of the guys that um, is giving me some good inspiration right now. I looked at his stuff and um, I'm anxious to, he just passed away, but his, his work is so lively, and I think that his passion, the way he felt his passion is kind of like the way I feel my passion. He really loved to paint, and he, he, if you know the story of Ivy, or if you don't know the story of Ivy, he got arthritis in his right hand so bad he couldn't paint, so he learned how to paint with his left hand. Wow. So that is so inspirational to me that he had the passion. God was speaking to him. He had to do it. He had no other choice. So I have a philosophical question for you. Okay. Does art imitate life? Does life imitate art or does it go around in a circle? I think art imitates life. I think it does go in a circle, but I think art uh, imitates life. You have to give life to the canvas. And uh, if the canvas don't speak to you, it's, it's, it's not art to me. I mean, I have to, whenever I walk up and I look at other people's art, I get inspired by works of uh, Ernie Barnes. I get inspired by um, works of uh, uh, Larry Poncho Brown, uh, Kevin White Williams. Uh, these guys have, um, whenever I see some of the things that they're doing, uh, it amazes me.
Now, there may be some young or even older since you started when you were 40, some people who may want to paint. What would you give them as a piece of advice? The best piece of advice I can give them is to paint the detail. Stay with the detail. The, uh, actually, you, I mean, you can look at the figures and you can try to draw the figures and all that, but when it gets down and dirty to it, it's the details of making a, you got a place and if you draw it and it's flat, the only way to make it live is to put some detail in it and to go in and get the detail and pull it out and it makes the eyes sink into the, to the canvas and make the eyes pull out and the noses pop off of the canvas and the, 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 the wrinkles in the clothes and uh, all that detail, that's the, you know, the, 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 the expressions. The expressions are not necessarily just the eyes, but it's the way that the eyes, the details of the way that the eyes are actually looking at things. What about um, your paintings as far as being able to obtain one of them, to own one of them? Where, where is your artwork on display? Um, right now, I have some artwork on display at Exotique. Um, I'll be doing shows round and about. Uh, you can reach me on my website, Um And on there, you have information how to contact me, and uh, we can talk about uh, the pieces, or we can get your Z collect. I also have prints of my pieces, cards, um, and just different uh, promotionals on them.